This is Jack Allen from SAFE News, reporting to you on the scene from your local fire station. Today is a special day for Mr. Bumblesby. He has been waiting a long time for this day. You see, today, Mr. Bumblesby is reporting to Fire Department Drill School, where he is going to try to become a firefighter. We open our story with Mr. B attending his first class. I'm sure glad I got this uniform at that garage sale. It's gonna come in handy. Welcome to your first day of drill school. The job of a firefighter is one job where you have to be in good physical shape. We are going to be spending the next 12 weeks together, and upon completion you will be assigned to a fire station. We are now going to show you what you will be doing in the next few weeks to prepare you to become a firefighter. Wow, this is going to be interesting. Welcome to the Fire Department Drill School. The next few weeks are going to be very busy for you. Each day we will meet in the classroom before reporting to the drill court. We will start each day with an exercise routine that will strengthen your muscles for the job of firefighting. In order to finish drill school and become a firefighter, you must be in excellent physical condition. This requires doing many types of exercise. Climbing the hose tower and coming down the escape ladder will help you prepare for the job of firefighting. You will practice picking up large bundles of hose and carrying it a long distance. As a firefighter, you will learn to use different types of equipment. One of the main jobs in the fire department is to rescue people. We will practice using many types and sizes of ladders. You must learn to carry them, raise them, and put them up against a building. When using the aerial ladder, you will practice carrying firefighting equipment up to the fire floor. The drill instructors will help you. Putting the mask in operation quickly and stretching hose is a routine we will practice daily. We will all go into smoke-filled rooms to see what it's like and practice carrying people out that are in trouble. A firefighter must be able to use many types of ladders in order to climb tall buildings. This is a special ladder called a palm pier that is used to climb from one floor of a building to another. You will learn to work as a team, handing the ladder up to one another. Using the lifeline is another drill that you will practice. We will start at the top of the building and drop to the life net below. Our class will ride the fire trucks and respond to practice fires. Upon arriving, you will put on your mask, lay out the hose, and begin to put the fire out. We will practice on many types of fires.
Teamwork is important, and we will practice what you have been taught at drill school. One thing you will learn is how to use your axe to cut holes in the roof to let hot smoke and gases escape. One of the most important things we learn is to keep our equipment in excellent shape. Every day we will clean the fire trucks. Not only clean the top, we clean the bottom to keep our trucks in good condition. We will learn to slide the fire pole. Upon completion of drill school, you will receive your badges. Graduation is a fun day before you report to your fire station for full-time duty. As you can see, the next few weeks we are going to be busy training you to become firefighters. Now let's go out to the drill court area and start practicing. I am your drill master, and for the next 12 weeks, I'm going to be teaching you everything there is to know about firefighting. Today, we're going to practice lifting hose onto your shoulder and carrying it over to that building. I need a volunteer. Let's see. How about you? Me? Yes, you. Step forward and show me how you would pick up this 100 feet of hose, then take it over to that building. But, but, oh well, here goes. <coughs> Oh, this isn't going to be as easy as it looks. Okay, okay. As you can see, it's not as easy as it looks. After a few weeks of drill school, you'll be able to lift that hose with no problem at all. Well, the rest of the day went by quickly. And we return to our story with Mr. B and the other recruits returning to the classroom. <sighs> oh. <sighs> well, well, being, being a firefighter is exciting, but it's sure going to be hard work. Tonight, you are going to have homework. I want you to take this home fire safety checklist home with you and make a complete inspection of your home or a neighbor's house and make sure it is fire safe. You want to return it to me in the morning. Let's see. I know my house is fire safe. I know. I'll go over to Mrs. Reeves' house and check and see if her house is fire safe. Well, Mr. B and the other recruits made it through the first day. And we return to our story with Mr. B approaching Mrs. Reeves' house. Hi, Mr. B. Why, why, you sure look exhausted. What did you do today? I've just finished my first day at drill school at the fire department, and they've given me a home fire safety checklist. I was wondering if I, well, could I check your house for fire hazards? Why, sure. Come on in. Huh? Hello? Hello? Come on in. Come on in. Mr. B, this is my parrot, Captain Hook. He likes to repeat everything you say. Wow, this sure is a nice home. Let's, let's go to the kitchen and check there first. Let's see. Kitchen fires. Uh-oh, we'd better unplug the toaster. When an appliance is not in use, it should always be unplugged. Do you overload your electrical outlets? I don't think so. I'm okay there. But there are so many electrical appliances, I'll bet a lot of people overload their circuits. Ah, uh, Captain Hook wants to play. Nobody likes me. Not now, Captain Hook. We're checking to see that our house is fire safe. Fire safe, fire safe! Matches? Matches shouldn't be left on a counter or anywhere else where children can get at them. Mine are stored up here. I store them up high in a cupboard away from smaller children. 
and <laughs> parrots. Ah, uh, Captain Hook is tired. Time to go to bed. Time to go to bed. Let's see. Well, let's check your bedroom next. I see you have a smoke detector installed high up there on the ceiling by your bedroom door. Good. I wonder if it works. Let's check it. There's the test button. I'll just use this broom handle and test it. Oh, oh, the boat. Wow. That sure is loud. They need to be checked twice a month to make sure they operate properly. I also have one installed downstairs. I haven't checked it lately, but I'm sure it still works. In the bedroom, it's important to keep furniture away from the baseboard heaters and portable heaters. You know, there should be at least 12 inches of clearance from heaters. Everyone should make sure their bed is far enough away, so if the covers fall off the bed, they're not going to land on a heater, because it could start a fire if the heater is turned on. Uh-oh. I better remove the extension cord that's running under that rug. It can be worn from people walking on it and cause a short, which in turn could start a fire. Ah, fire, fire, fire! That's a great idea, Mr. B. I never thought that that would be a fire hazard. Do you know your two exits out of the bedroom in case of a fire? Why, yes. Mr. B, I'd first get down on the floor and crawl over to the door and feel if it was hot. And if it was hot, I wouldn't open it. I'd turn around and crawl over to my window, staying as low as possible, open the window, and crawl out and go to my meeting place. I'm glad you mentioned the meeting place. It's very important that everyone knows where the meeting place is. It should be located in the front of the house. And if somebody doesn't show up, don't go back into a house that's on fire. Tell the fire department when they arrive, and they'll get them out. Ah, meeting place. Captain Hook walks the plank. Some people sleep upstairs, and those people need to have a special way to get to the ground. Maybe a fire escape ladder needs to be located by the window, or a rope by the bed that could be used. Let's check my front room. See you have a screen in front of your fireplace, and it should always be shut when you're using it. So you should make sure that you don't keep paper or other items that could burn too close to that fireplace. Fireplace! Fireplace! I also make sure that my curtains and my furniture are not too close to our baseboard heaters. What about ashtrays? Well, I don't smoke, but when I have people over that do, I have these safe ashtrays that hold the cigarette in the middle so that the cigarette will not fall off the side as it burns. Ah, smokes! Smokes! Calm down, Captain Hook. You don't know what you're saying. Safe ashtrays are important. Most of the fires that start at night are from cigarettes, and everyone should be aware of how dangerous they are. Sometimes when people are smoking while sitting on a couch or an overstuffed chair, Ashes drop down behind the cushions, and they might not start a fire until a couple of hours later, when you're in bed asleep. Captain Muck never sleeps. Ah, Captain Muck never sleeps. You know, I bet a lot of people don't realize that. It's a good idea to check behind the cushions before you go to bed. I think your house is pretty safe from fire. But what about your basement? This way, Mr. B. There's my smoke detector that I told you I had. Well, let's check it. Why, why it doesn't work. Oh, Mr. B, I feel terrible. I just took it for granted that, you know, that, that it would work. That is a big problem we're having. People are buying smoke detectors, but not checking them regularly. Here, let's put in a new battery. Ah. Now it should work. Oh, thank you, Mr. B. 
I'm very glad you came over to see if my house was fire safe. Wow, what a big area. The only problem I can see is those papers and boxes over there in the corner. They should be removed. Uh-oh, remote, Captain Hook. Rock, give me a cracker. Good idea. I'll see that that gets cleared up right away. What about uh, gas or paint? Oh, I keep them stored out in a shed, away from the house. Good idea. Remember, gas should be stored in only approved gas cans, certainly not in a glass jar or plastic container. Do you have the fire department telephone number and your address on your phone so that in case there is an emergency, anyone can dial it and give the correct address? Oh, yes, Mr. B. I have it installed on all my phones. That way, if a babysitter or a friend uses the phone, it'll be in plain sight. Your house is very fire safe. But one of the most important things to do is to have a fire escape plan from every room. I have a copy that I'll leave with you so that everyone can draw the two exits from each room. Oh, thank you, Mr. B. I'll sit down with the whole family so that everybody will know how to get out in case there is a fire. Well, I'm going to have to be going. I have a big day tomorrow at drill school. Thank you so much for letting me inspect your home. Bye, Mr. B. Bye, Mr. B. Ah, Captain Hook wants to be a firefighter. Quiet, Captain Hook. We are so lucky to have Mr. B come to our house and check to see that it was fire safe. Rock, fire, fire, call the fire department. Rock. Well, Mr. B was very excited about becoming a firefighter, and upon completion of his 12 weeks of drill school, he was assigned to a fire station, where he continues to teach fire safety and to make our city fire safe. He hopes that every child in school will go home and make their home fire safe. <laughs>